You wake up and the sun is shining and there's nobody for miles and miles and miles around. That's pretty special. There's just this otherworldliness of being up high and above it all and kind of watching out over the earth. It's just, it's very different. I never thought as an urban gay man that I could ever live out in a, an extreme rural area like this. We can't even imagine living the way we used to live ever again. It would be so stifling. So let's go on up and take a tour. That wasn't so good, was it? We've got Keep going. 66 steps to go up. And we have a name for every one of them. It's 40 feet up in the air to the top of the tower. But sometimes you have to stop and catch your breath on the landing. We're only halfway. I know, one more flight, one more flight. We actually bought this land and built the lookout as a weekend getaway. We initially would come up here for two days and then we would say, well, that wasn't really long enough. Next time we go, let's go for three. And then four years ago, we looked at each other and we said, you know, what, what would it take? I mean, what would it take for us to be able to live there full time? The Forest Service built these things so that they could look for fire. The technology has really replaced many of the ones that used to be here. There, there were hundreds of them in the state of Oregon, and now there are maybe 40. We said, oh, this is cool. Let's do one of those someday, if we could ever find the land in a place we really wanted to be. And it all came together. We're at the top of the stairs, and just like in a Forest Service fire lookout, there is no bathroom in this lookout. So when you don't have a bathroom, you have to have lots of options. So we have four, four potty options. Yeah, so potty option number one is the pit toilet out in the woods. If and you can see the path that goes into the woods. So then the second potty option is the pee funnel. Now, we realize that that's very boy-centric, so whenever we have female guests, we always give them a go-girl, and they can use it out here if they want to. Um, it's kind of their souvenir of the Summit Prairie. All right, come on around this way. Let's go inside. We're urban, deep urban city guys. I was a residential real estate broker and we lived in a great big house and we put on a starch shirt and tie, went to work in my Jaguar every day, ate at very expensive restaurants, went to really fun parties. It's fun, but it's a little bit limiting. <laughs> yeah. We've been through a lot together. I mean, really shifted. We're growing old together. We've been together for 23 years. You know, we, he, he was in his 40s and I was in my 30s when we met, and I'm 60 now and he's 70. 70. I don't know, what, it, what, what made us think I we could do this? I don't you know, we stopped, you know what, we stopped backpacking. So inside, um, we have two beds downstairs. Uh, the lookout can sleep a total of four. If it's cold, like we live here full time in the winter time, and many times it's quite cold, we have a little propane stove. Uh, and light, we have LED lights. We have, it's run by solar, it's off grid, so it's, it's not connected to the uh, landline or any, in any way. We have a convenient of a cell tower for Verizon, so we've got access to the internet. 
there's a collection tank down there that collects the water and then there's a solar powered pump that pumps it up into a little pressure tank that's up under the bed upstairs. But it actually feels and operates just like regular uh, city water. Um, we have a little hot water heater, so you have hot water. So it's, it's very much like if you lived in the city. Uh, we have a propane stove and oven. Just because you live off grid doesn't mean you have to have bad food. You'd be surprised how many really big meals. We've done Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners here and huge spreads for just that stove. So it's kind of cool to have that capability right here. We also have a propane refrigerator that has a little um, freezer compartment in it. So it's very easy to keep food fresh here. So now we'll take a tour of the upstairs. All right. Yep. We live according to the rhythm of the land rather than to live in, you know, an alarm clock. Part of that is the fact that we're sort of retired from that kind of routine. You know, waking here, up here in the morning when the sun first starts to shine in, and you, I call it surveying the kingdom. You know, you just look out and you just see for miles and miles and miles, and you hear the birds singing early in the morning, and you look out and the deer are on the meadow. And then yeah. I, I will say this, when the snow hits, and we have a snowstorm come through here. The snow cakes on the window, so, so you can't see out. And it's one of those things where, oh my God, we're in, we're in the middle of a snowstorm and look at all that stuff and we're cozy and also stuck here. Yeah. <laughs> you can just open the doors like we have now when it's nice and you can sit out and enjoy the view outside. pretty great to be able to sit out here and watch the sunset yeah. and storms come. The coolest part of all is the shower because on a really cold day when you come out here <laughs> when there's snow a, on the deck and, and, and yeah, take a shower, of, uh, it is the best. That. It is my favorite. And it nobody can favorite. see you. There's only forest service land around us so we nobody's here. Yep. We get to do this in front of God and everybody. Yep. This is our vegetable garden. It's early season, so we don't have a lot of stuff very mature yet, but we have radishes and we have some strawberries that have come back and <gasps> some, I uh, see that, and there's kale. This is our hot tub here. It's actually heated by a wood stove that's submerged inside the hot tub and the water actually comes from our spring. It's just gravity fed into the hot tub. The only three things you have to have for this hot tub are water, wood, and a match. One of my favorite times to come in the hot tub is on a wintry, snowy night where there's snow just everywhere. You have to kind of, it's really cold when you come down here and it's freezing cold when you take your clothes off and you jump in here and it's so warm. And after you've been in here for an hour, then when yeah. you get out, it's really cold. But when you put your clothes on, it's toasty. It's, it's toasty warm to hike all the way back up to the lookout. <laughs> I think my favorite thing is to just sit here and just be absolutely still and quiet and just be really aware of the sight and the sound and the smell of what's going on around you. I don't want to say that it's for everybody, but it's worked very well for us. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for the experience for anything. And, you know, someday we'll have to move back to the city. Someday we will not be able to go up and down four flights of stairs every single day. 
uh, you know, several times. Someday we, we'll we do that. We wonder how often, how soon that's going to be yeah. because there are days when yeah. it feels like, oh my God. But I will say this, um, I will forever remember this experience and be grateful that I had it. I, I don't think I'll ever look back in this and go, well, shoot, what did we miss while we were out here in the woods? Not a thing. It'll still be going on when we get back to the city. It's really, really pretty wonderful. I'm in love with this place.